Now folks, listen, I've been known to buy some stuff that doesn't make sense, but this one makes perfect sense. Now, I bought this thing off Marketplace. When I saw it, I just knew I had to have it. Let me show you what I got. What do you guys think of this? My new go-kart. I get it. It's really not a good go-kart. It's a little bit dangerous. And by dangerous, I mean entertaining. Now this is some type of Alice Chalmers tractor. The frame's been cut off and they lowered the front, added a GM rear axle, a GM six cylinder, a GM three speed. It's a little bit on the sketchy side, but I think it's gonna be fun. So come take a closer look and see just how weird this thing is. When you open the hood on this bad boy, and by open, I mean gently remove the entire thing, you're greeted with not an Alice Chalmers engine, but a GM six cylinder. What I'm assuming is that maybe some of this stuff is like out of a Nova or something like that. All this is car. <laughs> Every bit of this is some kind of car. It doesn't currently run. I've heard it run, but ever since I heard it run that first time, it has not started back since. I have a couple suspicions. One, it's out of gas, and two, the fuel filter's full of rust. I know the second one's true, and I know the first one's true, so maybe it's both. So starting up here, I'm amazed that it fits as well as it does. Uh, even, I think they used the steering box from the same car, whatever it was, and it's all just handmade. A lot of it's just really kind of thrown together, and that's the problem, because a lot of this is kind of dangerous, but we've got a six cylinder that I know will run. It just needs some pep talk and a little bit of reassurance that it is okay to be orange. So we'll start up here. Let's work our way back and see what we have. Starting from the engine side, we see a three speed transmission right behind it. Uh, wiring kind of just wherever it feels like being and then a battery tray that really isn't a tray but more of hopes and dreams. Now what the problem is with this thing right now is the fact that the brakes don't work. It's got a new master cylinder a single reservoir, but it does not have front brakes at all. There's no front brakes on it because it is a tractor. But in the back, we do have drum brakes. He said the rear bleeders would not work. I haven't tried them yet, but we will try and see if we can make those work. And if they don't, we can replace them. But the first thing we need to do before we do anything to this thing, try to make it run, make the brakes stop, because I will not drive this thing unless I can stop it. Forgive me for not knowing my GM stuff, but I assume it's some kind of GM 10 bolt. It's a car rear end. I don't know what it's out of, but you can see the frame just directly bolts right into the rear axle. There's no suspension front or rear. It's all on the tires. So again, like I said, a little sketchy, but it's a tractor after all, don't forget that. And here's our shifting mechanism. The biggest thing that I can see being an issue is that you sit so low compared to this. Look at this clutch pedal, and it just dangles out in the wind. There's nowhere to rest your foot. And then here's your shifter. And it all works, I think, I hope at least. You've got your brake and your gas pedal. Only two of these work. I'll let you guess which ones. The last time I tried to start this thing, it didn't want to run. And partially, I think the reason is that this choke does not have any kind of control on it, so it just kind of sits wide open. So I'm gonna hold the choke with my hand and get a little starting fluid here, just because I don't want to kill the battery. Perfect. Oh, there she is. When they open the door, we'll let her warm up. And that's exactly what happens every time. Gas spraying, but there's none. You really can't see in the tank. But I will show you this fuel filter and you'll be like, wow, how does this thing even run? Here's a fuel filter with the freshly painted rubber hoses. As you can see, it's full of gas, but look on the other side. Oh, that's rust. Completely covered in it. Of course, this thing's full. Drain pan, drain pan. Where art thou, drain pan? Will you stop? Thank you. This is not going even remotely how I hoped it would. This is great. And when I said it wasn't full of gas, I think I lied. Whoa! Gravity is a powerful thing, I tell you. You just stay right there. 
No. In there. Thank you. Stay. Activate. There we go. That looks better. There's the old filter. That is bad. Full of rust. Look at that. You can see things moving around in there. Let's give her another shot. Still probably cold. That's okay, I understand. It's a little chilly. You see, she'll stay running now. The fast idle's on. See, that's what it does. It just is like it loses oil pressure, not oil pressure, but fuel pressure. And then it doesn't want to start back. And you can't drive it like this because it immediately wants to die every time you try to drive it. Here, we'll keep her choked for a minute. Let her get good and warm. Everything shakes. Look at the grill. Ugh. I apologize for that noise I just made. Are you good now? Maybe this is just like a procedure every time you go out and drive it, you just gotta sit here and hold the choke open. Wow, it's hot. Well, luckily, I've got a set of spark plugs. Let's just change them out here and see if it helps the idle. All those spark plugs were disgusting. Let's see if that helps anything as far as starting and running. Oh, easy. It's like a brand new car now, or tractor, truck. <laughs> now that's a race tractor thing. Why are we leaking coolant? I don't think it's supposed to do that. I don't believe that's a tractor option right there to just kind of spit coolant out. Where's it coming from? Hello? Uh-oh. Hmm. I'm afraid the bottom of our radiator might be toast. Well, I was wrong when I called this a GM 10 bolt. From what I can tell, this is a Ford 8.8 .8 rear end. If you look at this tag right here, based on what I found online, it's a 308 gear and it's an 8.8. .8. So, we'll have to find wheel cylinders that'll fit an 8.8. .8. Whoa! That was dumb. Well, there's brakes in there. I don't see much going on for action though. If I push the pedal, does anything move? Oh! So we're getting pressure back there. He just said he couldn't bleed them. Oh yeah, the bleeders are rounded off. Well, the brake bleeder is completely rounded off. Uh, the other side looks okay. I think I can get a socket on it. But uh, this one here, I'm gonna try and weld a nut to it and then just try to get it to come out completely. The other side's actually good enough. I think I can get a socket on it, but this side is completely gone. Mm. I think I left enough surface area for the wrench to go on. I don't know if I broke the weld or... Yeah, I broke the weld. 
I figured by the time that I went through the effort to get this new bleeder in place, we could just replace the whole wheel cylinder and not have to worry about it. So that's exactly what I want to do. There we go. No telling how long that would have lasted. Could have been bad, so we might as well just fix it while we can. There we go. Well, it's a good thing we decided to replace the wheel cylinders. This one here has been leaking for a long time. That is caked on there. Woo! Wow. Just disintegrated any kind of paint that was on the shoes. Well, I can't for the life of me find my funnel. So this transmission dipstick tube is going to do just fine. Ah, perfect. Brakes are bled. Master cylinder is full. Now we can try and see if we have brakes. Watch this. I can stop now. You really had to press the pedal hard. There's not a whole lot, of, like the ratio in the pedal is terrible. Oh, through the mud. Yay! This is the view of the steering wheel. Look at that. It's upside down. It's very bumpy. Very bumpy. Oh. Oh. You got a little bit of a blow by situation there. It's not very easy to drive one handed. Get back up into the shop here. Got to do a little more work here. Put the hood on. Get the headlights on. And brakes. Ha ah, It stops. Now that we have brakes, we can at least make this thing look a little bit better before we go for a drive. Put the hood back on, and the rear is just held on by this metal band. And hopefully the wind will do the rest of the work. Whenever we put the hood back on, we have these headlights that will actually bolt and hold the sides of the hood on and they work. Now of course this thing looks killer as it already is, but I think we can make it look that much better. Somebody painted it a long time ago and we can probably bring some of that shine back. Now what we're going to be using is Poffy's Patina. It's a wipe on clear coat and to get things started we're going to use their pre-cleaner. This is basically just a soap that gets everything kind of cleaned up to make sure everything is going to look good when you clear it because once you clear it it's kind of hard to go backwards. And then just to make sure it's extra clean we use their wax and grease remover. You would be surprised how much is left over even after you wash something. This stuff gets all those little tiny details that you don't see to make sure you have the best finish possible. We'll go with our wipe on clear coat. This is gloss. I like the gloss just because it makes it really pop. We'll back this bad boy outside and we'll start with washing it. I'm suited up, ready to go. Got my helmet on. Make sure that we're plenty safe when I drive this thing. We're gonna see if we can go down the road. We're gonna take it slow on this first little lap. I'm not gonna go fast at all. Probably won't even get out of first gear. This thing has a highway gear and really, really tall tires. We'll do a quick panic stop. Okay, right, we're good. And the shift mechanism fell apart. Well, we're going to back up, just slowly make our way back. 
car gas nothing to see here it's going backwards at a very high rate of speed oh gosh a blind hill that together for a second and get it to go into a different gear. All right, we're just gonna ease it down this hill. Oh gosh. Hopefully my neighbors don't care. Well, it's a good little test run. Break it clutch linkage so this part right here came apart from the clutch linkage so this is supposed to be up here and it's not so we'll have to uh, put a bolt back in that so I guess we're, we're gonna walk back to the shop it's just over the hill over there and come back for the old tractor well unfortunately it didn't get me back home but I mean, I guess the good news is it didn't make it that far. So at least the walk home is not too bad. But we're uh, trekking across my front yard right now. I'm gonna cross my little river here. Try not to get muddy. There we go, yeah. So we're gonna fix that clutch. Uh, it's just a matter of a little bolt, I guess, just fell out or something, or there's a pin there. I don't know, but it, isn't it funny that that clutch worked perfectly fine every single time I've moved that thing and then the one time I decide to actually drive it it just completely fails so it is what it is all right we're leaving the shop I got all right we're leaving the shop got some hardware I'm gonna see if we can fix this and get it back over here at some point so And we're back. No big deal. Hopefully this bolt will fit that I got. Okay. Will you go through? Oh, great. It's not long enough. <laughs> that is literally hanging on by a thread. But I think it'll work. We can go back and get us a longer bolt. And if all else fails brought a screwdriver on to shove it in there and make it go home <laughs> i found the problem so this right here this little whatever this is it goes into this shift rod and for some reason whenever i shift it over this whole pin completely fell out and it has to move in order for the gears to change and whenever it wouldn't it just broke so i'm thinking i might have to figure out a way to secure that a little bit better but now i can get it in and out of gear so we'll figure out a way to get yeah see look that's what happened right there Should have brought the starting fluid back, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. It'll, it'll go up pretty close. Probably good. Okay.
all doing that on the road. And it's the next day. We're gonna try this again. I've been charging the battery, so hopefully it should be good enough to at least go down the road again. And I'm hoping that our clutch fix is fixed. So let's try and take it down the road again one more time. Of course, what is a go-kart without testing its off-road capabilities? There's thorns everywhere. What have you bought? You like it? Um. So here's what I'm thinking. I think if we wanted to actually get this thing to where it can be driven properly, it's going to need a cage. It's going to need suspension. It's going to need a better seat, better steering, actual brakes. I mean, it's going to need a lot of stuff before it can actually be driven properly. If you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you want to see more on this thing. It's cool. It's definitely awesome. But it is so impractical. Like it's it's nearly undrivable how impractical it is. Folks, that wraps up our first video with the Alice Chalmers tractor cart, powered by a GM six cylinder and a three speed to make it all work. Now this thing is a bit dangerous. There's a lot of risk associated with this thing. Every time I drove it today, I was only in first gear. I couldn't imagine what second and third gear could actually do because this thing is way too fast for what it's rated for. Especially with no suspension, a terrible seat, and no seat belt, no kind of cage or anything, it's bad. So before we even do anything else dramatic with this thing, it's gonna have to get a lot of safety features done if you guys wanna see more content on it. So if you wanna see more, leave a like down below. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys think would be an awesome improvement for this thing. What I see is uh, you know, better braking, suspension all the way around, a better seat, a seat belt for sure, a cage of some sort, a better steering. I just see this thing being like, looking exactly like it is, but really low to the ground and actually being able to handle. So if you guys wanna see more of that, please let me know. Also while you're at it, order your t-shirts and your stickers because every bit that goes directly into that store comes out and goes into stuff like this to make it better and to put it back on the road. So I appreciate every single person here who watched it. Thank you guys for being so supportive through the years and I will see you in the next one.